Hello and welcome to the Brandon Smith Rugby Channel here on YouTube and Wales have run out winners against England 40 points to 24 down at the Principality Stadium to claim a triple crown the first time Wales have put 40 points on England ever incredible performance from Wales as a Wales fan I'm absolutely buzzing but we're going to take a look at five big talking points from this match and my word there were a lot so to pick five was a challenge but I'm going to do my best to rattle through some stats and have a look at the game and see where it's won and lost for both teams as always if you're new here do subscribe as we push towards a thousand subscribers and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and i'll be interacting with you as well let's get on to point number one point number one is that wales deserve to win this game wales in my opinion were the better team for the majority of the game especially in those opening 20 minutes taking the game to england having the incentive and we'll get on to why i believe that was the case in a few points Wales dominated possession with 56 possession and territory of 54 percent and also they spent six minutes in England's 22 compared to England only spending three minutes in Wales 22 which demonstrates on the scoreboard I thought Wales played in the right places at the right time and also they used the correct players in the correct positions I think every player did a solid job today but on the whole I thought Wales deserved to win this one Let's get on to point number two. Point number two, we've got to talk about this. It's the refereeing decisions. Pascal Gaziel, or Gaziel, I'm not sure how to say his name, had a few questionable moments in this match. Let's take a look at the first one. Of course, it's with Owen Fowle. He tells Owen Fowle to go and talk to his players about a certain issue. He says, go talk to your players, have some time. He does that. He then stands next to Dan Bigger, says time on and blows his whistle as the England players aren't all set. Now, let's look at it from both sides. Let's look at it from England's point of view, first of all. He's blown that whistle very, very quickly while knowing fully aware that England aren't set to go. If I was English, if it happened to Wales, I would be extremely frustrated. I'd be very, very annoyed with that decision. But according to the law, the referee's done nothing wrong. He's allowed to do that. He's blown the whistle. Once he's blown the whistle, play continues. That's just how it is. Should he have waited for the England players to be set? Probably should have, in my opinion. I can understand the frustration from the England side. But according to the law, the referee's not done anything wrong. But I can understand Farrell's issues with that. You could argue maybe that English should be set. But again, all his players, he's called all his players in to have a word on that one. The second big talking point has got to be Louis Rees Samet. Was it a knock-on? Well, when you look at it, the answer simply is no. It's come off his hand, it's hit his foot, it's bounced backwards onto Anthony Watson and then it's rolled forward. It's not a knock-on. The last contact before he goes forward is from Anthony Watson. It is not a knock-on from Louis Rees Summit and it is a try for Wales. Again, though, you could argue, and Sam Warburton said this afterwards, and we'll get on to England's ill-discipline shortly, but maybe England were lucky to have 15 men on the pitch for the entirety of the game. The amount of penalties they were conceding was outrageous at points, and maybe maybe Pascal Gazier could have looked to put someone in the bin. There's some questionable moments from him for sure, but I think he got some of them right, maybe. Let's get on to point number three. Point number three then has got to be about Kieran Hardy. And if you've watched the channel before, if you have watched the Welsh Rugby Roundup show, then you will know that being totally honest, but going into this game, I was not the biggest fan of Kieran Hardy. Although he came off against Scotland and impressed a lot, I thought Gareth Davis was the safe option. But how wrong was I? He made such a difference today, sped the game up, scored a brilliant try. And we'll have a look at his stats in just a second. Straight away from the off, he sped the game up. He got quick ball. He was sniping around. He had a brilliant link up with Bigger and with the forwards. He was that perfect link between both. And for Pivak, credit to him to go with Hardy today really paid off. Let's take a look at his stats. Seven, so he played 65 minutes, one try, 75 metres made, seven carries and 52 passes made as well. What a performance from Kieran Hardy. He did go off at the end with a little knock, so we hope he's OK but we do have two weeks before we face the Italians. But Kieran Hardy, what a performance. And I believe now he will have that nine shirt going on through the rest of the tournament. Point number four has got to be about England's ill discipline, which cost them again. It's been a theme throughout this Six Nations. It cost them against Scotland and today it cost them once again. A lot of talk about Mario Toje, who got six penalties conceded, but he's that type of player who plays on the edge. So 
I don't really want to focus on him particularly. I want to focus on the whole team. They conceded 14 penalties compared to the nine of Wales, which is fairly high for Wales. But the big penalty that I want to focus on has got to be the Johnny Hill one on Kieran Hardy when Kieran Hardy gets that try. It's completely unnecessary. There is no need for him to go in there. He doesn't achieve anything. It's not inevitable that Wales are going to score in that instance. It's not as if they get the ball wide and Wales score. The defence was set for England across there. If he's going in there, there is literally no need for him to do that. It's similar to the one with Dan Robson where he blocks Louis V. Samet's path. Louis V. Samet's can get into that ball. I think it's Elliot Daly collects it. And Elliot Daly's going to collect that anyway. And that gives Sheedy the opportunity to put Wales even further ahead. And that's probably the game for Wales. So for England, is it a managerial thing? Is it something that Eddie Jones needs to instill in the players? Is it something that Owen Farrell needs to be communicating better with his players? Saying, look, our discipline is going. Is it down to individual players? Is it a team thing? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, if I'm being totally honest. But let me know down in the comments down below, how would you fix England's deal discipline? Because it certainly is an issue. And number five then, point number five is that the subs made a difference today for Wales. Wayne Pivak, credit has to go to him on this one, on making the correct substitutions at the correct time. Bringing on Willis Halahola, who once again had a fantastic game, putting in big tackles, stepping beautifully, and also took a pretty big hit from Tom Curry, but just bounced him off as if he wasn't there. Sheedy came on, kicked all his kicks and bought that attacking impetus. Although I am a little bit concerned about the way he steps out the line sometimes, but apart from that, he played so, so well today. Once again, taking those kicks in pressured situations was fantastic to see him do that after he did struggle a little bit against Scotland in the kicking department. James Botham came on, made a big difference as well. Corey Hill came on, scored a try at the end. And do you know what? The, the game management that Pivak has shown over the course of this Six Nations has been fantastic. And nobody can look at Wales now and say, are oh, you lucky? Because... You had 15 players on and they had 14. No, we had 15 on and they had 15 on as well. So there we go. That's my review. Those are the big five talking points I thought from this game. Let me know your thoughts on the game down in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe. As I said, we're pushing towards a 1,000 subscribers and leave a like on the video. Tomorrow, I'll be doing a watch on for Leinster against Glasgow going live at about quarter past five. And then on Monday evening, we will have the dream team of the weekend Six Nations action. So be sure to subscribe for that. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the love on the channel recently. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you soon here on the Brandon Smith Rugby Channel.